enough of that gay hilarity. Right, yes, as you may have guessed from the, uh, the tune, <laughs> this is the grain to glass of my 1963 Watney's Cake Red Barrel. Ooh, what a mouthful. Um, slips off the tongue, rolls off the tongue, one of the two. Anyway, grain to glass, what you're about to see is brew day footage. So, so the first thing into the fermenter is 227 grams of invert sugar number three. I've had to heat this up ever so slightly just to get it to uh, to flow in any form whatsoever. Mm. Imagine golden syrup with an erection. That's how hard this stuff was earlier. But um, dip it in there just to heat it up a bit more. So this is what the invert number three sugar looks like once it's dissolved. So it does add a bit of colour to the uh, to the wort. Next to go in is 120 grams of spray malt. Malt extract. First malt going in is 150 grams of crystal malt. So stirring in the first of the pale malt, in total I'll be adding 3.4 kilograms of Maris Otter pale malt. So it is 20 to 1. I'll leave this mashing and recirculating until 2 o'clock, so an hour and 20 minute mash. So brew day not going particularly well. Um, got to the end of the mash and forgot to put any sparge water on. So um, yes, that's put me back by about an hour whilst I waited for the, the water to heat up. Took the uh, temperature of the water and my mercury thermometer broke inside the sparge tank. So um, I had to ditch that because obviously mercury is poisonous. So uh, I had to start again. So it's delayed me by about two hours um, by not getting the sparge water sorted out and obviously this mercury thermometer smashing inside the. Uh... <sighs> I'll see you when I do get around to sparging, whenever that will be. Finally, we are on to the sparge. We'll sparge this up to about 28 litres and then we'll start the boil. So we've reached the start of the boil. A small boil over, but nothing too drastic. But yes, uh, start of the boil, first hop addition, 42 grams of Fuggles. So it's a 105 minute boil, uh, next hop addition 15 minutes towards the end, so in one and a half hours. Last 15 minutes of the boil, in goes a proto clock and <gasps> Janice! Hello! Where have you been? Where haven't I been? You, what, how, what are you putting in there Janice? Oh, some East Kent Golding's hops. Smells like zesty rabbit droppings. Yeah, it's 23 grams. 23 grams? Yes. I didn't measure them. Lovely. Thank you, Janice. You're welcome, darling. So we've transferred to the fermenter. Going to be using Nottingham Ale yeast for the first time. I should probably rehydrate this, but I can't be bothered. Don't have enough time. Need to finish this off because it's New Year's Eve and I've got a party. So that's all settled. Probably need to drop in the hydrometer as well. Um, so yeah, I'll do that in a sec. I completely forgot Janice was in this video. Never mind. This is the final result in a Watney's Keg Red Barrel glass. Um, it didn't clear very well, did it? That looks rather disgusting, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, it hasn't cleared. It hasn't cleared well at all. Carbonation's about right. Got a nice little head. Um, I suppose you get sort of fuggles on the nose. Not really getting much aroma at all, to be honest. But quite sort of a green hop sort of smell, you know, it's a fresh hop sort of smell. It smells like garden foliage. Good garden foliage, good hop garden foliage, I don't know. Anyway, let's drink.
It's an easy beer to drink. It's <laughs> I suppose it's got like um a slight like an orange wine gum sort of taste. It's got a little bit of candy flavour, a little bit of orange, but it's quite diluted sort of taste. It's a bit weird. But a lot of um, fresh hop presence as well. Um, now, I'm sort of doing um, this is side by side, so that's off the keg. I wasn't very happy with. And I do have some bottled versions. So, let's see what the bottled version is like in comparison. It's all over me. <laughs> So the bottle version is actually a wee bit clearer, but it's still fairly hazy. But it's clearer than the um, the cake version. The other two there. This cough is all over me. Cough a bit. Right, let's try the bottle version. different. That is so much nicer. It's smoother. Got a bit more um, hint of the roasted malt, the crystal malt. You can taste it more in this. You do get a bit of that sweet candy taste you got in the, the keg version as well. Um, possibly from the sugar because the invert number three was slightly caramelized so perhaps get a little bit of caramel taste in it as well you get a nice hot hot taste to it as well um, I think it was these Kent Goldings were uh, oh I can't remember you saw that video for did you but yeah that whatever it was I put in it's coming through Quite sort of floral, hints of citrus, but not obviously New World citrus, but traditional sort of, you know. A lot smoother, a lot smoother. This one tastes heavier. It's weird, isn't it? Sort of regret not bottling the whole batch now. That's nice, that's not. Perhaps there's still a lot of yeast in the bottom for some reason. And it just needs to drop more. It's been on, on keg for about two weeks, so two to three weeks. It's not chill haze because it's um not chill haze because it's gone on a heat pad. Um, right sort of temperature. But yeah, it's very weird that, very weird. Hmm. That's quite sweet florally. Quite refreshing. Whoops. And this deeper, more filling, hints of caramel, but the hops don't come through as much. Very weird, very interesting though. Um, I don't know, perhaps time will improve it off keg. I've got about four bottles of it, so um, yeah. I'll try and offload on people. Right, that's it. End of brew day. End of brew day? End of this grain to glass. I'm brewing. As you can see, steam rising from my shoulder. Um, yes. So that's the grain to glass of Watney's Keg Red Barrel. I won't put the music on again because, well, let's not. Thank you very much for watching and um, a very interesting result. Watney's Keg Red Barrel, Watney's Keg Red Barrel was better bottled. What? Bye bye.